in Asia, stocks closed higher on Friday following news that U.S. President Donald Trump had agreed to meet North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The move also tracked moderate gains seen on Wall Street following the implementation of U.S. metals tariffs. The Trump administration's acceptance of North Korea's invitation sets in motion the most significant development in years of intermittent negotiations about the North's nuclear weapons program. Japan's Nikkei 225 closed higher by 0.47% after earlier recording gains of more than 2% on the news. Meanwhile, South Korea's KOSPI advanced 1.08%. As tourism-related stocks got a boost from the latest geopolitical development, elsewhere Hong Kong's Hansen Index rose 0.96%. On the mainland, the Shanghai Composite edged up by 0.58% and the Shenzhen Composite added 1.56%. Sydney's S&P is at 200 edged up 0.34% as most sectors traded in the green with the exception of energy stocks and gold producers. And back here in Africa, South Africa will sign long-delayed renewable power agreements with 27 independent power producers next week. The signing scheduled for March 13 will breathe live into a national renewable energy program that was once the world's fastest growing but has since stagnated. The deal to be concluded next week will release 56 billion rand of investment over the next two to three years. Still in South Africa, the airways may not be able to continue to operate as a going concern while the struggling state-owned airline has failed to properly record the financial information and the value of assets. This is according to the Auditor General. South Africa's airways made a net loss of about 5.6 billion rand in the year through March 2017. Liabilities exceeded assets by about 17.8 billion rand. A turnaround of SAA is among the most pressing items in the entry of South African President Cyril Ramaphosa, who has pledged to revive state companies after years of mismanagement and corruption allegations under Jacob Zuma eroded their balance sheets. Under new chief executive officer Vian Jarana, the company is cutting rules and costs to reduce a dependency on government debt guarantees. The airline is looking for an equity partner to provide cash to help turn it around. And Ghana's largest mine workers union plans protests and strikes throughout operations in the country if the government allows Goldfields Limited's local unit to dismiss more than 2,000 staff as it starts the process of hiring a contractor to operate its biggest mine in the West African nation. According to the union, Goldfields is committing acts of corporate greed aimed at amazing, amassing huge profits at the expense of Ghanaian mine workers. Ghana is the continent's biggest gold producer after South Africa and accounted for a third of gold fields revenue in 2016. Anglo Gold Ashanti Limited and Newmont Mining Corporation also operate in the country.